Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name's Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. A review would be great, too. By the way, I don't know if you guys have checked out my book, my latest book, Nine Rules of the Future, A Plan and Buy and For Humanity, which I wrote with ChatGPT. That's right, folks. I wrote this 170-page book with ChatGPT because if you ask me, ChatGPT is a mirror on humanity. Because basically what it does is it pulls in everything that humanity has ever done and represents it in a Q&A format. So I figured when I'm going to write a book on where humanity should go, a guide for humanity, I figured who better than to co-author it with than ChatGPT. Check it out at 9rulesbook.com, 9rulesbook.com, 555 for a paper copy, or you can read it all for free online. So I went on a hike yesterday. I went to a open space preserve just south of here, maybe a half an hour south of here, to meet a friend of mine. And we were going to hike this trail, about a five, four, five mile trail. And at the same time, we were going to have a nice conversation. Now, when I got there, it was cold. It was 7 a.m. in the morning. And that's, it's good because you want it to be cold because the sun comes up and then it gets, gets too warm. And you don't want to be on a trail when it's too warm and too, too, too sunny. So I got there at 7 o'clock. And I waited and I waited and waited. And I waited until about 7.40 and... My friend didn't show up and of course the entire time I was there there was no service on my phone so I couldn't text him and go hey what's up man what's going on so I thought oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the trail so I take the trail and then about halfway up the trail I must have gotten to a pocket of signal because my watch started buzzing and it said hey uh, here are some messages incoming still nothing from him so I sent him a text saying hey what's going on I, I decided to go ahead you can catch up with me if you want because he would he would walk faster than me uh, and then a couple of minutes later I got oh man I forgot my phone in Atlanta and my new phone didn't alert me so let's reschedule meanwhile I was halfway up the trail so I thought yeah sounds good let's do that and then I was I'd never been on this trail before he'd been on this trail but I'd never been on this trail and at the trailhead there were no maps so I didn't know where the hell I was going I luckily I did have some Google Maps downloaded to my phone and I was able to see that I was maybe two thirds of the way or a third of the way along the trail. And I was just to myself, okay, great. Maybe this is, maybe I can figure this out. So I was walking along the trail and walking, 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 walking. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is taking a long time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get back. You know, this is, this is a long trail. It just keeps going and going and going. And I don't really have a real map. So I'm just going to keep on going and hopefully I'll see a, a signpost which says, hey, back to the parking lot. So I kept going and going and going. There was, there was creeks across the trail. There was water everywhere. It's still a little wet here from all the storms we've been having. At one point, I had to ford a river to get across it. And then I, and I kept checking my phone to see if I could get some signal and get a map or whatever, some guidance, anything. And I thought to myself, this is, this is terrible. This is terrible. I'm, I, I could be lost. I mean, eventually I did get out because there were reasonable signs on the trail. And... I was able to get back to the car. Now, another time, I had a similar issue when I was hiking with my kids. We were lost for six hours because we didn't have a map and there was no, there was no signal, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought to myself, what's the problem here? What's the problem here? I guess it's my fault because I didn't pre-download everything to my phone because there's, at one point, Google said, well, you don't have an offline map for that. And I'm like, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me this? See, it's my fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault. It's your fault, Google, because you knew I was going to be here. I put it in my calendar. You knew I was going to be here. You saw I was driving here because you I was using Google Maps to drive there. So you saw I was driving here. You know I was going to an area without signal. So why didn't you anticipate that I would need most maps downloaded for that area? Why didn't you go ahead and say, oh, it looks like Chris is going to this trailhead and I know that there is no signal at this trailhead 
So why not download everything that you need to do and at the same time confirm with your friend with his friend that he's going to be there or proactively send a text if it show, sounds like he's not going to show up or he's not on his way and is expecting to get there at the same time. See, I think this is a problem with all of our systems is that there are systems everywhere which track all of our data. They have my data, they had his data, they have all of our data. They know exactly where we're going to go, they know wh exactly where we are, they know exactly where we're going. But they're not using this data to help us. They're not using this data to an to anticipatory way to help us figure out what we need. They're using it to shove more ads in our face, but they're not using it in an anticipatory way to help us. I talked about this before when I was talking about I was going to be late to pick up my son. And I said, why? It knows where I am. It knows how I'm going. It knows I'm going to be late. Why doesn't it automatically suggest a text be sent or send a text if, I've, if this happened before? Why didn't Google know? I mean, Google knew. Google knew I was going down there. Google knew it was an area with no signal. Why didn't Google download those maps for me? Why didn't it anticipate that I would need those things? and do it for me. Why didn't it anticipate that he was leaving his home in Watsonville or wherever he lives and come to see me? Why didn't it anticipate that? Why didn't it know any of these things? It knows these things. It just didn't put them together for me. And this is what I'm thinking is a huge failing of technology today. Now, some people might say, I don't know what you're talking about, Chris. That's privacy. I don't want Google to know any of this stuff. Well, too late. As Scott McNeely said, privacy is already gone. Get over it. Google knows all of this about us. Amazon knows a lot about us. Facebook knows a lot about us. All of these tools know a lot about us. Even if it's not them, T-Mobile, Verizon, all these companies know a lot about us. Where we're going, what we're doing, what we're planning to do, what we're going to do next. They know all this stuff, but they have not used this information to do anything other than make themselves more money. They could have used this information to help us live our lives, to anticipate our needs, our desires, and help us get to them. Why aren't they doing that? Is it capitalism? Is it because they're just they just care about making money for themselves and not literally helping their customers live better lives, improve their lives? I guess it was my fault because I didn't go in and download my offload map, offline maps before I went to a place where I didn't know there was no signal. How would I know there was no signal? I figured signal was pretty much everywhere. But Google knew there was no signal down there. T-Mobile knew there was no signal down there. So why didn't it, in an anticipatory way, already do that for me? I think what's happening is a lot of times, first of all, there's the profit motive. These companies, they just want to put ads in front of us. They're happy to put ads in front of us with the data that they have on us, but why aren't they using that data to help us live our lives, to improve our lives? They could just as easily do that. They could just as easily anticipate what we need to do next or what we are going to do next and do that. I mean, imagine, remember when you've ever been to a luxury hotel or a luxury experience where they did everything for you and they knew, they pretty much knew what you wanted. They knew how you liked things. They knew you wanted a mint on your pillow or they knew you liked the, the pool temperature, this temperature, whatever. That they anticipated all these things for you. They knew all these things about you and they anticipated and improved your experience based on what they knew. We are now in an age where these companies have all that information but they're not using it to improve our lives. They're only using it to put more ads in front of our faces. So if we really want to be disruptive, if we want to be innovative, if we really want to change things, we need to take all that data that we know about our customers and, and, and use it in an anticipatory way to help them get the next thing that they want done properly. Wouldn't it have been amazing if I was on that trail and I didn't have, or like five minutes after seven o'clock, I would get a signal on my phone or a preemptive message saying, hey, he hasn't left yet. He's probably not gonna show up in time. Or before I left the area, 
because it, it would have taken him an hour, an hour and a half to get there. It would have known where he was. Why didn't it tell me? Hey, he hasn't left yet, so he's probably not going to be there. Or maybe I would have get a notification that he hasn't left yet, and it would have already calculated that it wasn't going. He wasn't going to get there on time. So maybe I would have called him before I left the zone of no signal and said, "Hey, are you going to come or not?" Or text him. Maybe text him to get him up so that he could show up later. All of this data is known. They're just not using it in a proactive way to improve our lives. And I don't know what we need to do to change that. We need these companies or startups to step into this space and we are going to build proactive AIs for you that can help you live your life. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.